أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحلل عقدة من لساني يفقه قولي إن شاء الله in this chapter as we approach the nights of the martyrdom of Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib we've taken the opportunity to talk about Amir al-Mu'minin's characteristics over the next couple of nights so inshallah we're going to talk about bravery as the main understanding for tonight of Amir al-Mu'minin's character and as we know Amir al-Mu'minin Ali ibn Abi Talib has an ocean of characters to explore and learn from. One of the most important and the ones that stand out, especially to the lovers of the bravery of Amir al-Mu'mineen is what took place on the battlefields. And as we know, there are many stories that we refer to when we talk about Amir al-Mu'mineen's bravery. So in a glimpse, very briefly, we're going to look at a few of his heroics in different battles throughout history with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. The first of which is the first battle of Islam known as the Battle of Badr, in which Rasulullah at a aspect of having such a small number of followers were being attacked and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam would take with him, as we know, the 313 that we remember. That same 313 is the number that will be reoccurring with Imam Sahib al-Asri wa zaman in his appointments of those that will be his flag bearers, insha'Allah. So these 313 are all of a sudden fighting just under a thousand of the people that came to destroy the religion of Islam. And as Amir al-Mu'mineen shone there, as he was shining in every other battle afterwards, where you find that from the kuffar, the people that came to attack Islam, 70 were killed in that battle in traditions over half of which were killed by the sword of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. And as we know from traditions, Amir al-Mu'mineen was a youth around 20 years of age at the time. So you'll find that this name of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib was mentioned throughout the Arabian Peninsula to be one to be feared. And we find within history, when we look at warfare, and Islam defending itself against anyone that tried to attack from outside, you'll find there was a, an understanding within the warfare that no one should run away from a battle. And you'll find there was one exception, and that rule was only if you were facing Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. As every time you are fighting someone, it's looked down upon. If you are to run away from a battle, you run away from a one-on-one. -on -one. But if that person that you're fighting against was Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, people would not look down upon you because you, they know that you are facing certain death. As we know, Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib, in traditions, if he was to strike you vertically, he would split you vertically. If he was to strike you horizontally, he would split you horizontally. And that's why many people would fear this lion in the battlefield because they knew f certainly that if they were up against him that it's sure defeat and you can find his bravery over these battles over these 83 alongside rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wa sallam to be an aspect where all the quraysh when Rasulullah would tell him to go and reveal chapter 9 of the Holy Qur'an, people knew that there was not a household in Quraysh except there was someone that was mourning over a loved one because of the sword of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. We also understand that in the start of Islam, Rasulullah saw 
out many difficulties, but at the conclusion, he has a very beautiful statement stating that if it was not for the wealth of Khadija and the sword of Amir al muminin Islam would not be that which it is today. Showing you that wealth from Khadija and the bravery from Amir al muminin were very pivotal to Islam being established in the early years. When you look at the Battle of Uhud, just to give you an example of the people that were around Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam, as we know, with the incident that occurred within Uhud, when the Muslims were winning and advancing, and they left Rasulullah on the mountain without permission, running towards the battlefield to collect the spoils of war. Rasulullah was left by himself on the mountain, in which the battalion from the enemies would surround Rasulullah and they would begin to attack Rasulullah. You'll find that there was a woman that was defending Rasulullah and a man by the name of Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib. He defended Rasulullah in such a manner that the tradition said that Rasulullah, because of a strike, he lost four of his teeth. And that Amir al muminin in this battle, defending Rasulullah on that mountain from an approximation of 50 horsemen, you'll find that Amir al muminin broke his sword in that battle. And that's why we have the tradition stating that Jibra'il brings down Dhul Fuqar to Rasulullah and Rasulullah gives it towards Amir al muminin And that's when people would hear that cry in the sky stating, there is no youth except Ali. And there is no sword except Dhul Fuqar. La fata illa Ali wa la saifun illa Dhul Fuqar. Amir al muminin after defending Rasulullah on that mountain, the tradition state that when he returned home, Fatima al Zahra would treat over 60 wounds on the body of Amir al muminin So the bravery in defending Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the religion of Islam is always seen even at a young age, in Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib. So much so to showcase to us, there was a tradition in the battle known as Battle of Khaybar, whereby they could not penetrate the walls of the enemies for days on end, until on the third day which they were trying to gained victory after he gave the banner on the first and the second day to other people. On the second day, after not attaining victory, he says, on the third day, I will give the banner to a person that will bring victory. A person that he loves Allah and me, and Allah and I love him. So you can imagine everyone was looking and they saw Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib being ill from an ailment in his eyes. So they said, Ali has got all the merits in the battles that preceded. Surely it would not be Amir al muminin because he is ill in this particular battle. But you find that on the third day, Amir al muminin is summoned and Rasulullah takes from his own saliva to place in the eyes of Amir al muminin which cured his eyesight. And he brings down a door known as the door of Khaybar that in traditions 40 people could not move from its hinges. He single-handedly removes the door of Khaybar. In some traditions it says he used it, as a, used it as a shield. In others it said that he threw it off its hinges, killing people in the process. So you'll find the bravery to defend Islam has always been seen in Amir al muminins lifetime. But you'll find this same person that can remove the door of Khaybar, not being able to break bread to eat it. And when he's asked, O oh, Amir al muminin we saw you. We were there the day that you removed the door that 40 people couldn't move from its hinges. But we see you not being able to break bread. Where Amir al muminin replies by saying, this bread is for me, whereas that door was for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Giving us an insight into how and why he defended in the way that he defended. 
And that was purely for the satisfaction and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. In every action that we'll find Amir al-Mu'mineen delves into, as in his own words, he says that I have not done anything in my life or taken action except that I see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before, during, and after that particular action. So insha'Allah we can learn from the bravery of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi afdal salati wa salam to gain an aspect of how he went about defending Islam and learn from it. Because as we know, this defense is known as the lesser of the struggles. As we know, the greater struggle is the struggle within ourselves. But if we understand that Amir al-Mu'mineen did it for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the battlefield, and without a shadow of doubt, we understand that it's only because he has defeated his nafs and desire in the greater battle, which is within oneself, that he is able to achieve all that he is to achieve on that battlefield, defending Islam in warfare. So we understand this and inshallah we can learn from these aspects of bravery or glimpses of the bravery of Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.